Michael here and today we're looking at Psalms 29 specifically verse 3 and 4 and the exposition comes from the Treasury of David by Charles Bertrand. Verse 3 The voice of the Lord is over the waters the God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters the voice of the Lord is powerful the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. For the exposition, verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The thunder is not only poetically but instructively called the voice of God. Since it peals from on high, it surpasses all other sounds. It inspires awe. It is entirely independent of man and has been used on some occasions as a grand accompaniment of God's speech to Adam's sons. There is a peculiar terror in a tempest at sea, when deep calleth unto deep, and the raging sea echoes to the angry sky. No sight more alarming than the flash of lightning around the mast of the ship, and no, and no sound more calculated to inspire reverent awe than the roar of the storm. The children of heaven have often enjoyed the tumult with humble joy peculiar to the saints, and even those who know not God have been forced into unwilling reverence while the storm has lasted. The glory of God thundereth. Thunder is in truth no mere electric phenomenon, but is caused by the interposition of God himself. Even the old heathen speak of Jupiter's tonans. But our modern wise men will have us believe in laws and forces, and anything or nothing so they may be rid of God. Electricity of itself can do nothing. It must be called and sent upon its errand. And until the Almighty Lord commissions it, its bolt of fire is inert and powerless. As well might a rock of granite or a bar of iron fly in the midst of heaven as the lightning go without being sent by the great first cause. The Lord is upon many waters. Still, the psalmist ear hears no voice but that of Jehovah, resounding from the multitudinous and dark waters of the upper oceans of clouds and echoing from the innumerable billows of the storm tossed sea below. The waters above and beneath the firmament are astonished at the eternal voice. When the Holy Spirit makes the divine promise to be heard above the many waters of our soul's trouble, then is God as glorious in the spiritual world as in the universe of matter. Above us and beneath us, all is the peace of God when he gives us quiet. Verse 4 The voice of the Lord is powerful. An irresistible power attends the lightning of which the thunder is the report. In an instant, when the Lord wills it, the force of electricity produces amazing results. A writer upon this subject speaks of these results as including a light of the intensity of the sun in his strength, a heat capable of fusing the most compact metals, a force in a moment paralyzing the muscles of the most powerful animals, a power susp suspending the all-pervading gravity of the earth, and an energy capable of decomposing and recomposing the closest affinities of the most intimate combinations. Well does Thompson speak of the unconquerable lightning, for it is the chief of the ways of God in physical forces, and none can measure its power. As the voice of God in nature is so powerful, so is it in grace. The reader will do well to draw a parallel, and he will find much in the gospel which may be illustrated by the thunder of the Lord in the tempest. His voice, whether in nature or revelation, shakes both earth and heaven. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. If his voice be thus mighty, what must his hand be? Beware lest he provoke a blow. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. 
the king of kings speaks like a king. And when a lion roareth, all the beasts of the forest are still. So is the earth hushed and mute, while Jehovah thundereth marvelously. It is listening fear and dumb amazement all. As for the written word of God, its majesty is apparent both in its style, its matter, and its power over the human mind. Blessed be God. It is the majesty of mercy wielding a silver sculptor. Of such majesty, the word of our, our salvation is full to overflowing. Wow. That was all. It's more than a mountain full. God's power speaketh loud and clear. Beware lest you take him too lightly. Well, Michael here declaring yet again, Jesus is Lord. <laughs>